Uh, welcome to my talk. I'm Hyung Sokhan from KAIST. Uh, this is a joint work with my advisor Sankil Cha. Today, I'm gonna, corner, uh, I'm gonna present a corner fuzzer called IMF, Inferred Model Based Fuzzer. The number of corner vulnerabilities is increasing today. In the last year, over 500 CV entries were due to corner bugs. Furthermore, corner source code is used and changing frequently. The latest Linux corner contains about 20 million lines of code. As the size of source code increases, the likelihood of having corner bugs also increases. And corner, corner bug can be critical in terms of security. Then what would happen if there is a bug in the corner? In case of Windows, we can see this blue screen, popularly called the blue screen of death. And in case of the Mac OS, we can see this black screen. Then, unlike user level crashes, a corner crash stops the entire system. In the worst case, it can lead to unprivileged root access from attackers. Therefore, corner should be tested. So, how can you find corner box? There are mainly three methods, source-based analysis, white box corner fuzzing, and black box corner fuzzing. First, there are many techniques and tools that analyze source code, such as Sickly, Kint, and Minicheck. Because they rely on source-based techniques, they, they can only target open source devices. For example, Sickly and Minicheck are targeting Linux corner. It means this technique cannot be applied to commercial devices, such as macOS and Windows, for which corner source code is not fully available. So this is indeed one of the reasons why we are targeting macOS in our research. The second well-known approach is to leverage a white box fudging technique, which is also known as a symbol execution. White box, fudging, white box corner fudging try to explore all possible paths in a corner. For example, CLI and CAFOD symbolically execute Heister and Windows corner respectively to find corner box. But symbol execution is fundamentally limited by the fact that there are too many paths to explore. On the other hand, black box corner fuzzers does not need source code and is not limited by path explosion. Indeed, there are many practical black box corner fuzzers in the wild, which form the basis of our research. So before I introduce our technique, let's see what kinds of black box corner fuzzing technique exist today and what their weaknesses are. Uh, there can be many optic surfaces in OS, but existing corner fuzzers are mainly focused on system calls. And we can divide the existing approaches into three categories by how they mutate system calls, random-based, type-based, and hooking-based. The first is random-based fuzzing, which simply passes random parameter values to API function calls. In random-based fuzzing, it is extremely difficult to explore deep in the corner code because there would be user mode crashes if random parameter values are used. Let's see an example. Uh, suppose you fuzz the right system call with a random-based fuzzer. Uh, record that the right system call takes in three parameters, and the second parameter points to the buffer. Since random-based fuzzers simply use random parameter values, the second parameter of the right system call is likely to crash the user program as a random address is given, even before executing the main logic of the right system call. So that is, random-based fuzzers cannot explore the path of corner code and are likely to cause user mode crashes. The second category is type-aware fuzzing. Uh, type-aware fuzzers try to improve the weaknesses of random-based folders by observing parameter types when mutating them. Unfortunately, type error folders are also fundamentally limited due to their flow and context insensitivity. Here is an example. Uh, this is a sample usage of open and write system call in Linux. You first open a fi file with a specific permission. In this case, the write-only permission. And the returned file descriptor is now used in the write to system call to perform a write operation. But type error folders pass the random parameter values based on the type of the parameters. 
Therefore, it is unlikely to see user level crashes as in random based fuzzing. However, the type of the file descriptor is simply an integer type, and an invalid file descriptor can be passed to the right system call. So, as a result, the right system call will eventually return an invalid file descript error. So, this example highlights the flow insensitivity of type error fuzzing. And to overcome this problem, some type error fuzzers employ custom type aware mutation strategies. For example, in this case, rand fd function randomly picks a file descriptor among a set of valid file descriptors and passes it to the right system call. However, they do not care whether FD has the right permission or not. Because of that, the right system call would return an error in most cases. So this example describes why type error folders are context insensitive. The last one is hooking-based folder, which can potentially overcome the weaknesses I mentioned so far. Hooking-based folders follow API calls from a program execution while, while mutating their parameters. So, hooking-based folders can be flow and context sensitive. But there is also a major drawback in hooking-based folder, that is, it cannot control the sequence of API functions to call. Suppose there is a user level program as shown in the slide. Uh, the program has error handling code. Uh, if the right system code return an error because of the parameter mutation, then this program will exit immediately because of error handling routine. However, suppose there is a counter panic bug if close FD is called immediately after the right system code return an error then hooking-based folders will not be able to trigger such a counter panic because of error handling routine. In other words, hooking-based folders cannot control API call sequences. So our goal in this paper is to design a counter folder that can address all the challenges that I mentioned so far. Speci specifically, we want to design a new counter folder that can explore deep in the counter code and can be flow and context sensitive and can control call sequences. And our current focus is on macOS, but our technique is general enough to be applied to another, uh, other OSs. So we propose a new corner folder called IMAP, inferred model based folder, has three modules logger, infer, and folder. First, Logger module generates API logs from the execution of macOS applications, and inferred modules infers an API model from the API logs. The model is used, used to generate a C code that contains a series of API calls. And the inferred API model helps us to explore deep in the corner code while preserving the flow and context sensitivity between API function calls. And because our system generates a fuzzer from the model, so we can control API call sequences. First, let's take a look at how our infer works. The key intuition is that API logs obtained from the same program and the same user input can be different. For example, consider two logs obtained from executing asterisks on the same program, BNRS, uh, in the logs, we can see that some values are common and some parameter and some values are different. For example, the green represents common values and the red represents different values. So from the two logs, we can see that some functions always take a constant value as a parameter, while other parameters are not. So the same thing happens in MagWise too. Uh, this is a sample code that interacts with uh, Intel's graphic driver. And we obtained two API logs from the sample code. And the same phenomena can be observed in this case. For example, uh, the IR service matching function returns two different values, even though the same input parameter is used. From this observation, we infer two types of relationships between API function calls. First, we check the order independence 
which essentially decides the order of API calls. For example, in this log, IO service matching should be called earlier than IO service can matching service. And you can see that it is indeed the case by looking at the sample code. Next, we also check whether an input parameter is constant by comparing to logs. For example, the string Intel accelerator and value zero are constant. And among the parameters that are not constant, we can find out which, param which output value is the same as input parameters. For example, uh, the IO service matching returns a value that is used as the second parameter of IO service scan matching service. And we can observe the same relationship between API calls in the right log, and we say such a relationship as value dependence. And we also check there really exists a value dependence from the sample code. Now that uh, we know how we infer the API model, it is time to discuss how we can use the API model to fudge MegWest. Our tool works similarly as model-based fudgers in user land. For example, uh, when we fudge a JavaScript engine, we may generate JavaScript files from the JavaScript grammar, which represent relationships between JavaScript tokens. Uh, our approach is similar to this, but Instead of generating JavaScript file, we generate a series of API calls by considering the relationships between API calls. Uh, let's see an example. Suppose we have an API model like this code. Uh, first, we mutate the input parameters by their type with, with mutation function. For example, mutations Mutation string function simply returns randomly mutated string as the result of the first parameter, Intel accelerator. And the way we mutate the parameter largely depends on three factors. The PR on the seed for getting random value and the mutation probability for deciding whether we mutate the parameter or not. And the number of fixed bits, which decides how many bits will be mutated if we ever decide to mutate the parameter. And we mutate all the other parameters based on their type. But notice that due to the mutation probability, we do not always mutate every parameter from our model. Finally, uh, we repeatedly execute the API sequence within a while loop for extending the number of API calls. The same intuition is used in usual end fudging, where small seeds are replicated to expand them. And we make the number of iteration as a user controllable parameter. So this is how IMF works. Uh, now I will show some evaluations on our system. As I mentioned, our main target is MagOS. Uh, we evaluated our system on MagOS Sierra, which was released January 2017. First, we collected API logs of 93 IOKIN lib functions, which interact with Connor. And to collect the logs, we selected 105 applications, which were the top five popular applications from 21 categories in App Store. And we also had to manually generate input like mouse click or command line for, for each program to run them. First, we evaluate how accurate our, model, our API model is. Uh, based on the number of logs used for inferring the API model, we measured how many API calls return success. So this graph shows the result. Uh, as you can see, the accuracy becomes higher as the number of logs is increasing, especially when the number of logs is changing from 1 to 2. The accuracy rapidly changes from 30% to 85%. It means that inferring API models by comparing logs is effective. Of course, there can be both first positive and first negative in our API model inference, but our goal is not on inferring a precise API model, but on finding many corner blocks.
So our model was precise enough to find many corner box, as I will describe in the next slide. Uh, we now compare our folder against the IOQ folder, which is a study of the art MegOS folder developed by Google Project Zero. And notice that IOQ folder is hooking based folder. In other words, it uses user and the program to fuzz the corner. Therefore, we can directly compare IOQ folder with IMF under the same condition. We executed both folders with five applications in game category for 24 hours each. As a result, IOQ folder found three unique corner panics, whereas IMF found 10 unique corner panics. And in case of IOQ folder, only folder process was crashing the corner. But in case of IMF, there were five different types of crashing process. This means that IMF could find bugs in various different contexts, which highlights the fact that IMF can explore deep in the corner code. So, can IMF find the real bugs in MegOS? To answer that, we ran IMF on MegOS Sierra, which was released in January this year for 1,140 hours with 95 API models from 95 application of 21 categories. So as a result, we found 32 unique corner panics, and we also manually analyzed all the bugs found. Uh, six corner panics were likely exploitable, uh, which means the cause register for crash was related to control flow. And three corner panics were an apparent reference, and 23 corner panics had only those impact. So finally, we also ran IMF on the latest MegWest High Sierra, which was released about a month ago. But un unfortunately, it is not the latest MegWest anymore because Apple updated MegWest just two days ago. So, however, I will show a demo at the end of my this talk which can crash the latest MegOS High Sierra. And in this ex experiment, we ran IMF for 120 hours with 10 API models. And surprisingly, we found more unique corner panics than the previous experiment. We found 39 unique corner panics in total. And 25 corner panics were likely exploitable, and we could corrupt the uh, the RIP register in five of them. And there was no null point reference, and 13 corner panics had those impact. Uh, of course, our system has some limitations. Uh, selecting a user land program can largely affect the result of IMF. This is indeed the same for user land fudging, where seed selection is very important. And our system currently employs simple random mutation strategy, but we could have adapted advanced mutation strategies used in user land folders. And finally, some bugs are not reproducible due to the non-determinism of the bug OS. And we ran all our experiments on real machines, and we could not fully control the environment of our system. So this makes some of the bugs we found not to be not reproducible. And all these issues could potentially lead to interesting future research. So we made, our, we made our system fully available on GitHub to support open science. And we always welcome pull requests for our GitHub. And if you find any corner box with our, our tools, please let us know. So, uh, now, before I finish my talk, I would like to show a demo. My demo will crash my MacBook. That means uh, if, if the demo was successful, uh, I will be able to see the corner panning message like this on my own display. But you will not be able to see this message because my MacBook will simply freeze. So instead of that, you will see the uh, Blank, blank screen, maybe. So, meaning that the screen will go off if my demo works. So, uh, 
here's the demo. And first, let's check the version of this MacBook. Uh, as you can see, it is a Mac OS High Sierra, uh, which was released just two days ago. It is very fresh, yeah. And I have a generated C program, demo.c file, but Apple told me not to disclose this old code and box, so I cannot mention which application was used for this code. So, uh, and I'm I'm uh, I cannot show this code in more detail, so because it is it is not fixed yet. So I'm gonna compile this code with Clang and execute it with demo.sh. Uh, this script will uh, repeatedly invoke the demo program. So let's start fuzzing my MacBook. Oh, before I start, I should exit my, my PowerPoint to protect my PPT files. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, let's see, we can see the uh, color panel. Uh, remember, if uh, my demo works, uh, the screen will go off. Uh, uh, it'll take some time to crash the corner because, uh, yeah, oh, because of the randomness. So, oh, wait a second. <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> oh, the color panel of course, yeah. Uh, this is the end of my talk, and thank you for listening, yeah. If you need slides, uh, wait a second, because my MacBook is high uh, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, great work, uh, Yu Feng from UT Austin. So I was wondering, uh, um, can you comment a little bit about uh, because one of your advantage of your your tool is the, the the sequence of the API matters, right? And then uh, actually uh, we actually look into the the bug report from Google uh, Project Zero about uh, those uh, I/O key frameworks. So basically, we look at the 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 program that can actually trigger the bugs. We look at that uh, most of the bugs are actually they follow the same patterns of a API call. So I was wondering, in you, in in the case in the vulnerability that you uh, identify, uh, did you dis uh, did you uh, identify there was kind of a diverse uh, in terms of the API sequence? Uh, for instance, uh, to my if I understand correctly, so so in your approach is you basically you took the logs from the from some some apps, and then you filter out all those logs that correspond to the the user name, and then you keep the the the, the system call, and then you. You basically you loop over the system call and then mutate the value, right? But uh, did you see this kind of some sort of a diversity in terms of API call in the sense that, uh, like, uh, each API call might 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 force you to to enter a different kind of state of the kernel, and then the state of then uh, once the their state got changed, the, the the bug that you can find actually matters. So, yeah. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh. Uh, your question was uh, uh, the uh, can you repeat that? <laughs> so basically, uh, <laughs> suppose I have uh, say ten, uh, I identified ten uh, vulnerability, right? Ten unique vulnerability, yeah. and then say I took the system. Uh, those ten are caused by like a uh, ten different set of uh, uh, system core that you generated, right? If I look at the system core, if I look at the the system, the core sequence of those system core. So are they like uh, demonstrate some sort of a diversity in terms of the those uh, the sequence, or are they looks mostly similar? Ah, your your question was uh, my uh, my demo .c program the C code like demo .c is very similar with on others. No, I was wondering yep. are they looks uh, similar? I, I mean, in terms of the bug that you found, ah. so you have a bunch of C program right to trigger those vulnerability, right? So if you look at the system call that you make in those C program, yeah. so are they looks uh, very similar or are they looks ah. uh, completely different? Uh, uh. Uh, it depends on what application is used for generating C code. So well, when we hooked up, uh, we used a program that like uh, 
media player or video video player, then it will use the graphic driver. And when we fuzz the Bluetooth, uh, when you use Bluetooth app, then that application will use a Bluetooth driver. So depends on the application, uh, the uh, the API sequence can be different. So uh, yeah. uh, I, I guess we can discuss offline. Yeah. I think you misunderstood my question. We can uh, discuss offline. Sorry, of the, yeah. So really cool work. Uh, nice demo, obviously. Yeah. Um, I, I can definitely see this technique having a lot of applications outside of this particular context, um, even you know outside of this context of fuzzing the kernel. Um, I was wondering um, if you could expand a bit more on how much effort it took you to um, build these API models, and and maybe this is kind of related to the last question. You know, did you do any sort of generalization um, on the the sequence of API functions that you observed? Um, or did you really just record like this is the, this is a sequence of system calls and and that's it? Uh, your question was, uh, uh, how did you record? How did I record the system calls? Did did you just record like if you observe A B C as system calls? Do you like observe? Or, uh, uh, let's let's let, let's say uh, did you if you see like A B C B C D. Uh, would you like generalize on that loop, or would you just replay replay that exact sequence? Uh, uh, with API definition like IO key function, we log the parameters. Uh, we log the value of parameters by their type. For example, the value is string. Uh, the the parameter is a string type. Then we we log the value as a string, and yeah, something like that. Okay, I think there's going to be some offline discussion. <laughs> so, were there any bugs that IMF did not find that the other traditional fuzzers did find? Uh, thank you for your question. Your question was, uh, is there any intersection between uh, IMF and uh, IOQ fuzzer? Were threat? Sure. Yeah. Uh, the bug found bug IMF found uh, there is no intersection in the box. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. With that, let's thank all the speakers one last time. This concludes the session. <laughs> <laughs>